Hello and welcome to my game music devlog, where I'm documenting the journey of writing music for Half, a solo co-op puzzle platformer. Today we'll be talking about middleware. For those of you that don't know, middleware is the software that kind of functions as a translation in between, in the middle of, my DAW, my music software and Unity, our game engine. In Unity then you only have to make the connections to what you have programmed into the middleware, which will then handle all the audio, all the transitions and everything in that category. Middleware makes my life as a composer much easier because it allows me to handle the logic of the music in a piece of software that's much easier for me to understand. And then it makes it much easier to then put it into the game engine. And it also gives you way more options in terms of adaptive and interactive music compared to if you would put it directly into the game engine. There are two main middlewares available at the moment, WISE and FMOD. They are both great and they both have their ups and downs and they're also both used a lot. For half, we decided to go with WISE. The moment we were having the discussion of which middleware to use, I had just been diving into WISE and their learning resources and I really liked what I was seeing there and the options it provided. While I was learning this software, I thought why not apply what I'm learning into a game project immediately? And I felt it would be the best fit for the game. Little sidebar, if you're wondering which one of these you should learn first, like I said, they both have their merit. They are both used by a lot of studios. Some projects you might get thrown into one that they're using already or in bigger projects there might be someone who is dedicated to just working in the middleware so in the end i would see if you can get a basic grasp of both just so you're prepared for whatever situation you might get thrown in on their website there's like four courses on different topics of using wise in a game project and i did the ones on basic functionality of wise just so i could get a grasp of the software what it's capable of i did the course on interactive music which dives deeper into the possibilities there are for adaptive interactive music and then finally i did the course on unity implementation so you also get a grasp of what it's like to take everything that you've been building inside wise and actually put it into the game project these courses are available for free if you want these are great resources and they also apply you with game projects that you can immediately use to try and get your feet wet with the stuff that you're learning this is of course a great way to get started but to actually really start applying what you have learned you have to put it into a game project and there i was with three courses under my belt but with an empty wise project the first thing i did was try to get some sort of structure going and to do so i followed this series of videos by kujo sound who explains a great way to get started on any project setting up your basic bus structure and events that you might need so i followed that to a t so i highly recommend if you're starting out with wise to also check out this video which i also linked in the description this project has actually grown quite a bit since then and i would love to show you a basic overview of how our current music system is working so here we are in WISE and the way that our music system currently works is that when you open up the game we trigger one single play music event. This event triggers the overarching music switch container, more on that later, and from there everything that changes within the music is handled by state changes. A state is something that WISE uses to communicate between Unity and WISE to determine what state the game is in. You can basically define these for yourself. One famous example of course is having a state for exploration and a state for combat which when it changes from one to the other you get more intense music. We don't have combat in the game, but we use states to get more and more granular in telling wise what section of the game and of what level we are in. So we start out with overarching, are we in the menu or are we in game? Then we go down which chapter are we in? And then we go down even deeper into which level we are and which section of the level. And since Half is quite a linear game, we have one big state group that is called music progression, which I then use to trigger a new piece of music based on where we are in the level. And since we're using these changes with stage changes, we put all the music into one big switch container. A music switch container container looks at the combination of states, checks which combination we currently have active, and then checks which piece of music is associated with that combination. And this piece of music can be either a single file that just plays once, it can be a playlist with all kinds of loops in there, or it can be another switch container. So here we have the main music switch, which determines are we in game, in the cutscene, in the menu, then it checks which chapter are we in, or which cutscene, if any. So for example, if we have in game and disaster, we go to the another switch container that says music disaster, and then if we go down to that one, here it checks which level are we in. So for level one, it goes to level one, and I have another switch container which determines what is happening in level one and what section we are in. So we use these to get deeper and deeper into where we are exactly in which section of the game. In here I can program exactly what piece of music needs to play but also and that's maybe even more important how the transition should function between those. There's a tab here called transitions and that's where we control these. So here I can say if we go from this playlist to that playlist or from this single piece of music to that one or from this switch container to the other I can tell exactly how long it should fade, when it should start, whether it should start immediately or on the next beats of the music or in the next bar and I can 
also tell whether or not I need to use a transition segment. And a transition segment is a single piece of music that will play when you transition from one thing to the next. So for example, in the opening of level two of the disaster chapter, we have this section where you're in a cave, which has a very ambient piece of music. And then we move into a larger platforming section. When we move into that larger platforming section, we have a playlist with a bunch of loops that is playing there. However, before we go there, I wanted to have the first part of this loop played in just the piano. So here I have this first piece that's playing in the cave. And this is the playlist with the loops that we have in the main platforming section. But as a transition segment, I'm using a specific piece of music where it's only the piano for that first loop. So it goes from here, through here, into there. So here I use a transition segment to determine what arrangement of the loop I want to hear the first time. But there can also be very short sections where I just want to have a transition to go from the loop into silence or from the loop into the next part. They can be anything you want. And that's the great thing about it. Using state changes this way, I have so much control over what should play when, how it will transition, if it needs to transition with a specific piece of music, yes or no. So I can get very nitty gritty and granular. And if I need to write a quick transition on the, on the fly, I open Cubase and just spit something out. And that's how everything is currently set up in WISE. In the next episode, I will go over how we have implemented all these things into Unity, how those state changes are triggered and some problems that we have faced along the way and dive a little bit deeper into the game engine. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.